sorry, I thought it was a bit late of recording uh, this one for the two or three that might be missing in action. Uh, fragment uh, 2M has a velocity of six meters per second, but at a specific angle theta. And then the fragment 1.5M also has a velocity different than the other one, eight meters per second, but it's at the same angle theta. Now they ask us, use the principle of conservation of momentum to determine theta. Wow. What are we going to do? What can we do? Yeah. There's, there's no objects which are colliding, so you cannot use the principle of conservation, technically speaking. Oh. Do you know what? Yes, you're right, but we can still apply it. Because what was my momentum? Remember, uh, it doesn't have to be a collision, it could be an explosion as well. What was my momentum of that firework before it exploded? The yeah. same as it the same as it is now. Mm, well, yes, um, in essence, except for now, there are three objects traveling in opposite directions. What was the firework doing just before it exploded? What was its velocity? Let's ask that. Zero. It was stationary. Zero. It was stationary. So we can see the following. So be careful. We need to apply still the momentum. So total momentum before time was zero. So we must make sure that the total momentum afterwards would also be zero. So it's important to take direction into a count. So I'm still taking my direction downwards as positive in this case. All right, so where are we? I'm sorry, I'm shuffling my paper. So remember direction. So if I want to write it out, my momentum of the one object plus the momentum of the object plus the momentum of my third object must equal zero. Now I have something to work with. Although the mass is still known as M, I know in the end I can cancel it out. You don't need to know the mass to work with this. So why are you calculating the horizontal velocities for the 2M and 1.5? No, I'm calculating the vertical velocities. Look at it. I'm calculating velocity. Oh, you're drawing the triangles like oh, that. Okay. Yeah, okay. I did it that way. So there's more than one way to skin this cat. Right. I'm going to do my way and I'm going to show another way or suggest another way that you can do it. So at this stage, I did the easiest one that I can do. There's my angle theta. I'm on the opposite side here. Why? Because this y component plus this y component must equal my momentum of my 3m. It goes upwards because then my linear momentum up and down should cancel and I would end up with zero. All right, so that's the theory. Let's see. I did my substitution into my formula. Three m times negative seven gives me twenty one m. So all that I did, I took that over to make it positive. I like working with positive numbers. Uh, calculate that out. Calculate it out. Get twelve m sine theta. Twelve m sine theta adds to twenty four m sine theta. Right. I want theta. Right. Theta, taking my sine over, get the inverse of sine. 21m divided by 24m. Now you can see my m's cancel out. I get a fraction, 0 
inverse sine inverse of that and I get to an angle of 61 degrees. So, so I ignored all hmm? I ignore I ignored all the theory and then I still got the correct answer. I don't know how. The theory. How did you do it then? I basically said the 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 upwards um, the upwards uh, momentum must be equal to the downwards momentum. I and think that's apply, what I did. You apply the theory one hundred percent because that is correct. Yeah, but I didn't know the initial momentum was zero. I just did, did that because I had nothing else to do. Yeah. Well, you know, so even in absolutely not knowing what you did, you did it the right way. You could do it this way as well, Danny. You could say, well, again, momentum before the time, before this object did anything was zero. So you could work with this horizontal momentum as well, right? Remember, this would have a horizontal component as well. And these two must cancel out. They must be equal and opposite because there's no net momentum in there. Must equal zero. So you could work from that point as well. Did anyone do it that way? No, sir. What I did is I drew a, I drew a vector diagram and then calculated the angles. Perfect. You could do it that way as well. Remember, momentum is still a vector. So 100% you applied even more theory than you thought when you did that. Okay. So, uh, okay. yes. So, did you, which, which for, like, for, what's the name? Resolving the components, eh? Yeah. Which one did you use? Did you use horizontal or... I use vertical. the vertical. I use the vertical one, the blue ones, uh, Liam. Just okay, so you didn't. Okay. I did that. It, it was the easiest way because I applied my theory of my conservation of momentum. So you need to remember, even if something has no momentum all the time, like the stationary firework, at the end it must also have zero momentum, and it makes sense because the one is moving down, or these two are moving down, and that one moving up must cancel. Out. Okay. okay. Thank you, sir. No worries. Are the rest of you okay? I hope so. I hope you're not putting on the Zoom and go and make. I'm fine, sir. Yes. Or whatever. You know, just oh, very good, sir. Waking up. Oh, fantastic. Okay. So, oh, guys. How did you do in the next question? Question number three. So uh, you yeah. had, I, did, I, I didn't use the it. formula that they gave us. Okay. You would have struggled tremendously because that first part, it takes 0.37 seconds to reach the ceiling. Uh, was not there. It started off with then in contact with the ceiling for a further time. So you skipped a you skipped a question. You must calculate the ratio. You know, it's because I'm not following my notes. I was so excited to tell you about a mistake that I made. Uh, that I'm gonna <laughs> get to that. Okay. Well, this isn't going to bother the scorers too much, is it? because it's the kinetic energy of the 2m uh, over the kinetic energy of the 1.5m object. Remember kinetic energy being half mv squared, half mv squared. You do your substitution, you still have m, but m cancels, and we get to a 0.75. So this should be a relatively two mark. Remember, very important. For a ratio, we do not give the final answer in fraction form. It must be in decimal form. So you can't have a 36 over 48 or simplify that to a, what is it, a 9 over 12 or something like that. I'm not sure what it's going to be. What is 9 over 12? Uh, uh, 3 over 4. 
So you can't have the fractional form in there. You need to have the decimal form. Please, 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 please make a huge, big note of it. Right. Everyone happy with the ratio thing? Yeah. Oh, okay. great stuff. Now let's move on to our next question. Jeez. I apologize. I do not know what happened to the, but when I looked at it and, and tried to solve the first bit, I couldn't. I had to go back to my original Word document and I saw that there was some information missing. So this ball has been thrown upwards towards the ceiling at a 9.6 meters per second. Then it reaches the ceiling, collides with it. It is in contact with the ceiling for 0 0.05 seconds and then leaves the ceiling at a 3.8 meters per second. The ball has a mass of 0 0.056, air resistance negligible. And then they ask, show that the ball reaches the ceiling with a speed of six meters per second. So this is where my apology comes in. You wouldn't be able to do that if you didn't know the time it takes to reach the ceiling, and that's the 0 0.37. So thank first. you for wasting my time. Oh, I'm so <laughs> At least you know what? Some I struggled people... on that question. I oh, struggled on that question until I finally just left it out. See, so. so why did you ask me about it? Usually you guys ask me and then, so I presume <laughs> you just didn't get to it. All right, okay. But, Nonetheless, let's work through it together. This is a very nice question. Ends up with a humdinger of a two mark question. But here we go. If we know the time that the ball takes to reach the ceiling, let's just go back to my. So if we know the time, we can calculate the velocity just as it reaches the ceiling, right? Because that's what a question asks. Show that the speed is six meters per second that it reaches. V equals U plus GT. So we use our equation. I use up as positive for my equations of motion. That means my gravitational acceleration is going to be negative 9.81. Because gravity always works down my gravitational force, right? So if I have that, I do my quick substitution and I get to six meters per second. So show that, always formula substitution and show that it equals to the value that they show. All right, don't try and, but I wouldn't do that on live. Uh, that you just put the value and fake your values off top. Don't do it. I do go and calculate your values. Right. Second, B. Using my equations of motion, I can also determine the height of the ceiling above the point from which the ball was thrown. Again, S is my displacement, UT plus a half GT squared. Remember the direction in there, and I get S is 2.9 meters. Right. Obviously, you had huge problems with this because you didn't have the info. Right. So, how about now? With C, they ask you, well, calculate the increase in gravitational potential energy. Right? Because we have that distance that the ball has traveled up to the ceiling, we can calculate my increase in potential energy. Mass, mgh, or the alpha h, the change in height, 
and it calculates to 1.59 joule, which is in two significant figures, 1.6 joule. So my data is given to two significant figures, and so is my final answer. Please remember that. Can I move on? Ha. Now, the decrease in kinetic energy of the ball while it is in contact with the ceiling. Now, this one you could have done because now they asked you to show that it is six meters per second just before it collides with the ceiling and it is 3.8 just after it collides with the ceiling. Right. So, hmm, I do think there's something weird about this. Let me just quickly check 3.8. Did I take in consideration my... direction? Me. So when you calculate the change in velocity, mm -hmm. do you do you first um, subtract initial minus um, final and then square it or first square them? No, square them. So it's final squared minus initial squared. Right. And we have a right. situation, just bear with me quickly. I think I made a bit of a error in here. So we have six meters per second moving up, all right? And then immediately after that moving down at a three meters per second. If down is positive, then up would be negative, it would be that, isn't it? Yeah. So when subtracted, we add it together. So that's squared and that's squared. Six. But so, so, hang on. Um, you get that times point zero five six equals that yep, times point five. Yep. So that's I forgot about my direction. Forgot about my direction in there. It wouldn't matter in any case. But do you know what? It's uh, you. It really doesn't matter. And I said it with my tongue busted into my cheek because it's just where the value comes in what you substituted because negative six squared is what? Say it's 36. What is six squared? It's 36 minus the 3.8 squared. So you had to subtract it in there. And that's the only thing that I wanted to make sure, make clear, you know, the, Substituting so, the right values, yes. Why do you use six as your final velocity? Isn't because six that, your initial velocity? Oh, yes. Sorry, I totally made a mock-up of that question, isn't it? Because six is my initial and 3.8 is my final. Let's just quickly get a new piece of paper here. And you said you're not with it. What's wrong with you? Help me here. Delta E K is half M final squared minus initial squared. So we've got that. All right. We've got the six meters per second moving up. And we have the 3.8 meters moving down. We said down is positive, so this is negative six. That's still okay? What I did over there? This is a half, this is 0 0.058. My final is the 3.8 squared minus uh, this is negative six squared, right? 
within that. And you get a negative answer because they refer to the loss of EK. The loss refers to a negative value. And now you get the 0 0.6 dual in there. Please, 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 please. I'm so glad I made this mistake. Guys, it is essential that you have the right values at the right places of substitution. Thank you, Liam, for reminding me and making me aware of that. It is really, really, really important. So even though my oh. answer didn't change, the way that I substituted it did. Yes. So? Should the answer be negative or should we write it in a positive? Because they talk about the loss, you're going to have a positive answer loss of E. You're going to have that. Uh, so, okay, negative that. So, it was transferred to something else, probably sound or heating and in the cooler. Okay, thank you. Okay. Right. Let's look at this next bit. I'll show that Newton's third law applies to a collision between the ball and the ceiling. Yes, it does. The force on the ball applied by the ceiling is equal to the force on the ceiling caused by the ball, but in the opposite direction. They stay out. Very important. Two words that must occur in there. That the forces are equal but opposite in direction. Because it 